Hey, friendo, Steve here. Welcome back to Ask Wrestle Juice. A lot going on in the wrestling world these days, and you guys got a lot of questions about all that stuff, so let's go ahead and dive into it. First up, we've got Stevie Claire. No, Steve LeClaire. Would you enjoy it if Stone Cold Steve Austin came back to help Cody against the Blood Lion? And if he does come back, would you rather he have his original theme or his disturbed theme? So I'm actually partial to the disturbed theme, Steve. But nobody else is. I mean, they look, there are some people, like I guess, in the internet wrestling community who appreciate the disturbed theme. I thought it was awesome. Um, but there's no way if he does come back, it's gonna be to anything but his like original Jim Johnson theme. Now, that being said, would I enjoy it if he came back? I don't know. At this point, like maybe kind of. If they found some sort of reason from a storyline perspective as to why it would work, um, yeah, I'd, I'd be down with that. I, 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 but <laughs> if it's just, if he just sort of shows up out of nowhere, then like, it's just going to be, look, I'll put it this way. I would be highly entertained by it. I would be laughing my ass off and being like, yeah, sure. Why not? Who cares? Nobody else is acting normal in this storyline. Why not? We bring Stone Cold Steve Austin in too. Perfect throwback to the Attitude Era. Rock's already there doing his Attitude Era rock shtick. Why not? Why not this ridiculous way to finish the story for Cody Rhodes as opposed to like Cody and Roman just one-on-one -on -one with no interference? That's kind of maybe how I'd prefer it with like the bloodline uh, and the Cody Avengers sort of taking each other out of the game and Roman expecting the rock to help. And instead rock just saying, you're on your own, dude. I think that's probably a better way to do it. But if they're going to be completely ridiculous, well, look, there's one thing that I just don't want my wrestling to be. And that's boring. It can be absurd. It can be surreal. It can be weird. And I'll be into it. I would prefer the story makes sense. And I feel like there's more drama to be had out of all the other players sort of clearing the way, sort of just letting Cody go ISO on Roman Reigns. That's how it should be done. I would find it wildly hilarious and entertaining if Stone Cold Steve Austin, if that glass broke and just out of nowhere, he comes out, you know, screaming at himself the way he used to. He drops the rock with a stunner. And then, uh, and, and, and then maybe that clears the way for Cody Rhodes. It's just weird. And I feel like it would take away from the moment of Cody Rhodes finishing his story. Cause it should be all, if they're going to make this guy, you make this guy. That's the story right there. That being said, I wouldn't hate on it too much. It'd be ridiculous fun. And sometimes it's okay if wrestling is just ridiculous fun. You know what I mean? Wrestle with Honors says, who would your current day DX in WWE and NWO and AEW be? So if it's AEW, NWO has to be, like, let's say it's three guys because it was Hogan, Hall, and Nash. But they were all coming over from WWE. And the last couple guys to come over from WWE, I mean, I guess it would have been like Edge... Danielson and uh, I don't know. Well, you know what would have to be? It would have to be this. People would have to come over. So when you're trying to think of people whose like contracts are coming up, like, okay, for example, Drew McIntyre, his contract's coming up soon, allegedly. AJ Styles' contract is coming up sometime this year. And uh, I don't know. You got to throw somebody else out there. I mean, you got to go with like somebody big right like you'd have to go with you know, like it's not, well I don't know I guess I I guess if you put those two guys you can get a guy who's already been there for a while and that would be Edge so it'd be Edge Drew and AJ Styles kind of lacks the oomph of like Hall Nash and Hogan back in the day so I don't know that that's even a good idea I don't know that you have an, a modern day NWO with those parameters because it has to be former WWE guys. I don't know. Ma How about this? If Andrade was still there, Malachi, Rusev, and Andrade, because they're all kind of malcontents. That's a good way to spin it. You just have them be malcontents. And then current day DX. 
Uh, DX would be, uh, I don't know, Finn Balor. It'd be like the Triple H. It'd be like Finn Balor, a heel Kevin Owens, and uh, I don't know. Ooh, can bring Mercedes back in. That'd be kind of cool for a heel DX. And then, uh, I don't know, or Rhea. Rhea makes sense. Look, let's be honest. Isn't Judgment Day already? They're kind of already a heel DX. You can't get away with what DX used to do, by the way. Or you could do this. You could do uh, get Trick and Mellow back on the same page. You'd be Trick Mellow and, uh, I don't know, like a, they, 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 they're stacked in their women's division in NXT. I don't know. Fallon Henley. <laughs> it's probably it's terrible. What a bad answer that was. The Geek Within, can you see a scenario where Roman Reigns retains at WrestleMania 40, and if he does, who does he feud with? Yeah, I did a whole video about it. It's called Cody's Gonna Lose at WrestleMania. Um, yeah, I can see that happen. If he does, there's plenty of people to feud with, especially with the draft coming up probably after WrestleMania. You got your Bobby Lashley, you got your AJ Styles. There hasn't been like a proper feud there. Um, Karrion Cross, you got him still out there. They you know, made that threat a year ago. So there's a couple names already for you. You could always come back around to Drew McIntyre. And of course, The Rock. You got a few with The Rock. Get that set up for 41, which I think is going to happen anyways. Uh, already did that one there. Uh, Turtle. Oh, well, go back. Turtle says, it's Triple H bringing back kayfabe. I hope. Look, there have been some things that have been very curious over the past couple months. Of course, when CM Punk came back, Seth Rollins backstage pitching a big fit when the reporting is he knew that CM Punk was coming back like earlier in the day, making a scene backstage so that the people that feed info to the wrestling journalists is, I'm not going to say a new thing, but in terms of like modern day wrestling journalism is kind of a recent thing, or at least a more overtly, you know, it, they're more overt about it these days. Um, yeah, no, it seems like, it seems like they are trying to, what they can do to offer up real surprises. And I'm all for that. I would much rather, I would much rather make my money analyzing the actual wrestling content than the backstage drama. At the same time, I understand there's a big audience for the backstage drama stuff, but if that stuff goes away and all we're left with is like a really killer product with awesome surprises, I'll be happy with that. I'll be super happy with that because people are interested in that too. So, uh, yeah, I hope I hope he is bringing back surprises and secrets and twists and turns that we don't see coming. Joel the Mech says, hey, Steve, where do you get your belts? I'll be honest with you. People have been very nice and they've just sent us some at Going In Raw. Like, I have a couple. Larson's got, Larson's got an Intercontinental Championship and one of the tag titles, I think. And then I've got this IWGP one. Up there, you guys can't see it, but out of frame up there on top of that shelf right there is a W1. And then over there, which is visible on the Going and Raw set uh, setup, we have the World Heavyweight Championship and the Impact World title. So just really not like Alto got us the, uh, the world title, the big gold belt. I think Rich got us the Impact one and the AW1. And so it's just Rich. This is Dirty Rich. <laughs> he sent us a bunch of titles, which is very nice of him, which is very nice of him. Argonaut Arcade says, how does Jungle Boy get back to AEW without getting batteries chucked at him by the fans? I think that's like a good, well, not a good response, but like, you know, the fans being pissed off at Jungle Boy. Uh, yeah. It doesn't have like a match in New Japan or something. Did he have a match in New Japan? I don't know. So yeah, I don't know. Spend some time in New Japan and then come back and then people will be all on his ass. You got to have a good plan for him when he comes back though. I don't know what that is. Some sort of invasion. You know what they should do? is have Jungle Boy, uh, Jack Perry, form a faction in New Japan, have him stay there for like a year, and then have him invade AEW. Hey, that's kind of a cool idea. Gustavo says, in the current WWE, are there still those moments that make you wish no one walks in while you're watching? Yeah, I hate saying this, I really do, because I think a lot of this stuff that I'm about to talk about, some of it is really good, some of it is just bad. And I'm talking about NXT. NXT has so many talky bits, so many backstage moments, so many skits. And for me, I find a lot of them kind of unwatchable, like bad acting, bad lighting. It's all flat. It just, it doesn't fit. It just doesn't, or uh, I'm sorry, it kind of fits with NXT. 
my main beef with NXT is its presentation. It's so much of their comedy. Some of their comedy does land. Some of it is so corny. And it's just amateurishly filmed. And when I'm watching that, somebody walks in. It's like, this isn't really cool. Like, this is kind of dorky. So, I don't know. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, if Lacey comes in, like, yeah. Like, I don't know. I'm not, <laughs> I don't need to feel cool in front of her. But if she walks in and there's some corny ass shit going on the TV, she's like, what is this? I'm like, now I got to explain it. Now I got to explain it. I can't just say, I don't know. <laughs> it ain't Dateline. Elemental Giant says, uh, who would you like to see the debut or return of at this year's Raw after Mania? He wants to see Matt Cardona. I would love that. Matt Cardona in his current iteration, no Zack Ryder. Matt Cardona would be awesome. That would be great. I would love to see that uh, in this year's Raw after Mania. Also, MJF. <laughs> or Ricky Starks. I don't know when Ricky Starks' contract is up. Ricky Starks would be rad. Bring him in. They're not doing them anything new in the AEW. Uh, Mr. Sammy says, has the Adam Cole double reveal aged well? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, because I had to scrap that old thing. MJF was fucked up and Adam Cole was fucked up. So, no. Should it have been delayed until Cole was fit? I don't know. That's a bad situation. They, I, I think they did the best they could do. I think they did the best what they could do, man. I don't, I don't know there's anything more you could have done with that. That's just bad luck. That was their A angle, and that was just bad luck. They they probably should have pivoted to somebody else, to be honest with you. Uh, Honked Off John says, since you love the long boy chicken sandwich, what do you think about seasonal fast food stuff like the Shamrock Shake? Uh, I, could, I could take it or leave it. I had a McRib for the first time like two years ago. Not a fan. Not a fan. Uh, cool, fresh guy. Did Bloodline Versace Rock just unintentionally win the fans over? Oh, he'll he'll probably get there. Rock being silly is going to make people pop for him big time. Oh, what is this? We got a Star Trek question. Juan Sanchez says, once Captain Pike's storyline reaches a natural conclusion, would you be interested in a reboot slash reimagining of Star Trek, the original series, to using the creative team and actors where applicable from Strange New Worlds? Yeah, I've thought about that. Because I'm a big old nerd. I've thought about that. I don't think that's a terrible idea. I think there's some cool shit they could do with that. Yeah. Um, I don't know how, how they're going to work out this thing with Pike. They Because Pike wasn't really featured all that much in the original series. There was just that the pilot and then the one episode where he was all burnt to a crisp. I feel like there's a way to like you know retcon that so that he's burnt to a crisp. But then they're able to fix him up or something like that. Uh, let's see. Braden Loader says, with Braun Breaker being called up to SmackDown, what's left for Baron Corbin once they lose their titles? I don't know. He seems to be pretty popular in NXT. Um, so I guess just sort of staying the course. Maybe he gets bitter over Braun leaving him and uh, he goes back to being a bad guy. Maybe he finds a new friend. Maybe he defends the tag titles on his own. I don't know. I don't know what you do with him. I feel like Baron's one of those guys that like, I feel like he's he's got a lot of talent. But he's been so like buried in dog shit creative for his entire career. It's really hard to dig your way out of that. So I don't know. I wish he'd grow his hair back though, because I thought it looked cool. Even like sort of it getting really thin on top. I thought his hair always looked really cool. <laughs> Some people can pull that off. Splash Wellington says, I'm here to ask the hard heading questions everyone's too afraid to ask. What flavor of juice is wrestle juice? I like vanilla. Oh, like a vanilla and like a cinnamon with like a little dash of watermelon. How about that? That sounds kind of good. Or is that terrible? I don't know. The Rob Observer says, do you ever watch anything on 1.75 speed? Why are you asking me this question, Rob? What does that mean? You can ask me that on WhatsApp. You have my WhatsApp thing. True story. Somebody from Nigeria called me on WhatsApp the other day. <laughs> that dude was going to try to take my money. <laughs> Another Star Trek question, this time from E. David Bruce. Says, what's your favorite Star Trek Enterprise episode that's not Terra Prime? I guess the one that I like is uh, the Borg one. I don't know which one that one is. I don't know what it's called. Is that Terra Prime? I don't think that's Terra Prime. I don't like that show. That show's crap. JB has a request. Says, bring back Stone Cold Reviews, pay-per-views, premium and live events. At least for the big shows, those were good. JB, I, I enjoyed those. I thought they were a lot of fun. 
They play havoc with my voice. And they're kind of like, I'm not going to say hard to do. I think the last couple ones I just gave to Rob. Maybe. I don't know, man. Maybe. I feel like people didn't like him as much as they like just me ranting, which I know shouldn't matter. I should just do stuff that I like to do. But I don't know. I don't, I don't really see it happening. I really don't. It just kills my voice. And it takes a little while to write. But, you know, maybe. You never know. One day, possibly. Richard Ives says, which WrestleMania match do you hope to see in WWE 2K24 showcase mode? Michael Cole versus uh, Jerry Lawler. <laughs> That's what I want to see. That's terrible. The worst match ever I want to see in showcase mode, please. Callum says, what's your one match everyone hates that you either like or didn't think was that bad? You guys, the people who watch Going and Raw know this answer. It's Hell in a Cell 2019 right here from Sacramento, California. It's like one of the worst, like Cage Match has it as one of the worst matches in history. One of the most downvoted matches in history. There was so much rage. And Larson and I sat there and defended it. Because the main point of criticism in that match was, it's Hell in a Cell. Why would they just stop Hell in a Cell? Which is a good point. At the same time, like Seth Rollins is about to kill a guy. And I get it. I know Undertaker tried to kill Mankind and they tried to stop that match. And Mankind was like, no, I'm doing this. But like the ref stopped it because Seth was literally about to kill a guy. So I don't know. It just, it played out. It was like a horror movie. And that's how horror movies are. They're, abs they're as absurd as that match was. I don't know. It was probably dog shit, but I didn't think it was that bad. We got a damage control question here. Coltanius Gregorius the third. What a great name. Says, so do you think instead of having Dakota Kai rejoin damage control, they have Dakota go solo and build towards Bailey versus EO versus Dakota after Mania? No, I think Dakota works best as sort of like the face or voice of damage control, probably. She's totally turning on Bailey. That shit is happening. But yeah, I kind of feel like it. I don't know what Dakota's chances are going solo. They need a mid-card title is what they need. Ryan Keefe, if Cody wins at Mania, who does he feud with as champion? Dude, there's a whole roster. Like, I mean, man, it's a lot of it, I think, depends on how the draft is going to shake out. Obviously, you got Bobby Lashley there as a strong guy. Logan Paul in a title for title thing. Maybe Logan Paul loses his title at Mania and Cody feuds with him. You can do that. I mean, th there's, you know, AJ Styles is out there as a bad guy. Cross, like you say here, he, that's a good situation for him. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of really strong faces. They do need to build up their heels a bit more. They do need to build up their heels a bit more. I don't know if you want, like, Lashley's a good, Lashley just gets cheered. But he's also in that territory where he's just a badass, and that's why people cheer him. People might actually cheer Lashley over Cody now that I think about it. Once Cody finishes that story, it's going to be interesting how they keep Cody fresh. Chaweezy says, what scenario is more likely to happen? Rock being a double agent and turning on Roman for Cody to finish his story, or Seth turning on Cody and Roman retaining? Seth turning on Cody actually does make more sense. That being said, this story has not really cared much about making sense. Therefore, Rock turning on Cody is more likely to happen. I'm sorry, Rock turning on Roman is more likely to happen. One Armed Gamer says, why do you not do Wrestling News Now videos? They're hilarious. I've answered this question a couple times on Twitter and it's very simple. I enjoyed doing the Wrestling News Now videos and then after Bray Wyatt passed away, he did a whole long series of videos where he was doing Wrestling News Now style videos about Bray Wyatt's death. And it was so tacky and it was so tasteless and it was so bad that I was like, I'm not gonna give this guy any shine. I didn't mind it when he was simply making silly things up. You know, when you have these thumbnails or oh, Rhea Ripley and Dom, you know, they're cheating on each other. That's silliness, it's absurdist, it's whatever. But a real person passed and he had a family and it's incredibly sad and to then capitalize off that in such a callous, horrible way. It may, I was, I'm not going to give this guy any more shine. So definitively speaking, that is why I'm never going to review another wrestling news. Now video again, I'm not going to do it. Cynical deviant says hamburger or hot dog style style. What is the style? I prefer hamburgers. What style are we talking about here? Add 206, as I remember at the Internet Darling Show in 2017, you and Larson said you guys were not big fans of Bret Hart. Has that changed over the last several years? If so, what made your opinions change? Yes, it has changed. Mine has. 
I think has, his has to a degree. The question we were asked for the panel in 2017 was, uh, what's an unpopular opinion you have? So what's my own hot take? And I said, it's Bret Hart was overrated as champion. Um, and I think we had only been doing the wrestling content for like a year at that point. I felt I knew plenty about pro wrestling, but one thing that I sort of underestimated was how much Brett brought to the equation and how influential he was. So I went back and I watched a bunch of Bret Hart matches and yeah, at the time he wasn't exactly like blowing up the ratings or anything like that, but like the creative for WWE was so in the shitter back then. And Vince really never gave Brett the full width and breadth of, so to speak of WWF marketing behind him. And so he's sort of an easy target, but given how influential he is, and I went back and I've seen a lot of Bret Hart stuff since then. I like Bret. I think he brought a lot to the table. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I'm, 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 I don't feel the same way about Bret. I don't feel he was an, he's an overrated champion these days. Straight Fire says, hey, Steve, can you try and explain why Ultimate Warrior was so popular? Because even as a kid, I never got the hype. A terrible mullet. Face paint that looks like you would get at the zoo, rambling promos that make no sense and zero in-ring ability whatsoever. So yes, I absolutely agree with the last part. He had no in-ring ability. He was a terrible, terrible, terrible wrestler and an awful human being. Don't, be, don't get that wrong. That being said, the guy did have crossover charisma. And when I say crossover, I mean camera charisma. It, it's that it factor. It's that Goldberg thing. Like Goldberg in a vacuum, just a dude with huge lats and uh, big traps. Uh, lats are here, traps are here, who snarled at the camera. But Bill Goldberg had that thing. He had that thing that is often attempted to be replicated, but it's never really properly, genuinely replicated. You know what I mean? It's the it factor. The warrior had that. The ultimate warrior absolutely had that. His design aesthetic was outstanding. I don't care what anybody says. The paint the tassels, the bright colors, how loped he was, how ripped he was. And he had his hair. He had the face. He had the face paint. All that packaging was an was a 12 out of 10. I absolutely firmly believe that. His promos were crazy. They were also very infectious. They were also very charismatic. The guy had tons of charisma. He really did. He just couldn't do shit in the ring, but I understand why he was so popular. It is kind of surprising to me that Vince wanted to roll with him as top guy, given that he really couldn't go in the ring. Vince always knew that Hulk Hogan could go in the ring. Hulk Hogan in Japan was a hell of a wrestler. He just didn't need to be in WWF. And in fact, it helped his aura for him to keep it fairly one dimensional. On the other side, the warrior, he couldn't wrestle. That guy was just terrible in the ring. So I'm not sure exactly why McMahon thought it was okay or thought that it would be a good idea uh, to, to, to roll with him. I really don't. Um, that being said, he was incredibly popular. It might have been the kind of thing where it was like he was so popular, it just made sense to put the title on him. Like that was just his trajectory. The fans loved him. And so you got to do it at some point. And he did it and didn't work. And then, the, you know, he came back a bunch of times and nothing ever worked. That's going to do it for questions. Everybody do me a favor. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Notify bell. And next time, we'll see you around. Until next time, we'll see you around. She doesn't like the couch anymore, guys. I explained this the other day. What do you do? Mama? Chip. Hey, what's this? Really? Oh, there you are. There's your pretty face. I love you. What do you do?